Hey, welcome to the Waxing Table Podcast. I'm Michaela. Here at the Waxing Table, we talk all things waxing, business, diverse education, and much more. Are you ready to get into it? Let's dive in. Hello, and welcome back to the Waxing Table Podcast. I'm Michaela. And I am joined by a very, very special guest today. Her name is Miss Gabby Rivera. And I'm so happy to have you on. How are Hello. you? I am good. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I It's funny because I remember whenever I reached out to you guys back at the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. And now it's like we're more than halfway through and we're finally doing this. So I'm really excited. Yes, I'm so yes. excited too. It's crazy how much time flies by. <laughs> I I definitely know. I feel like we say that every year, though, and then boom, mm-hmm. next thing you know, another year. Exactly. I'm like, we're about to be... 2024. Like, yeah. Like, Pretty I'm crazy. Really, I know, right? I remember when 2023 was scary. Now I'm like, oh, on to the next. <laughs> I remember when 2020 started, and then we were all in the house for forever. So mm-hmm. every time is going by quick. It is. Oh, my right. gosh. All right, Miss Gabby. So we want to know a little bit about you. So just share um, a little bit about yourself, where you're from, any hobbies that you're into, all that good stuff. Yeah. Okay. So originally I am from Dominican Republic. Um, I was born there and then I moved to the States when I was about 10. Um, So I have been here for like 14 years now. Um. As far as what I like to do, I mean, t- having my business definitely takes up most of my time nowadays, but um, self-care is very important to me. So I have two Australian shepherds, which I spend a lot of time with them. I do like to enjoy hiking. Um, so I do that and then also spend time with family. I'm really close with my family. So I actually do that very often. Oh, love that. So is your family like in North Carolina with you right now? So my family lives in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, Only family I have here is actually my parents, my brother, my sister, um, and my grandma. So, you know, cousins, aunts, and everybody else, they actually live overseas back in Dominican Republic. So, you know, very minimal, but we make it work. We're very close. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, so talk to us a little bit about your life growing up in the Dominican Republic. Like, what was that? like for you like experiences with family friends things like that so growing in Dominican Republic was actually very different than um, here in the states Um, like I said earlier most of my family does live there so you know having those cookouts and being around family is something that I hold very close to my heart Um, which of course it can be a little bit different here just because it's just my parents and my siblings Um, but yeah I actually had a good experience growing up there and I mean the beach is beautiful the food the culture so home will always be home to me do you go often or have you gone back like recently yeah so I try to go back once every year um I actually I'm going twice this year I already went once and then I'm going back again so it's always something to look forward to um my dad actually lives there so it's also really good to always go and see him yeah that's nice so what was your like experience with beauty services growing up did you like was waxing a thing? Was mm-hmm. like getting your hair done a thing? Was mm-hmm. that like super common in your family? So getting your hair done, definitely, yes. I actually remember I would go once a week, go to the salon, get my hair straightened out. Um, pretty much all the women in my family do that. That is big, a big part of the culture. Um, but as far as waxing, honestly, no. It, it is done in Dominican Republic, but it's not as common as here. Um, so waxing was actually something very new to me whenever I did start doing it. Okay. Yeah. So how did you learn about being like becoming an institution? Like what was that trans- transition like for you from moving from the Dominican Republic to like where you are now? How was yeah. that? Okay, so actually, um, I thought I was going to be a doctor. Pretty sure a lot of us have gone through that. <laughs> I, yeah, I started college and a year and a half in, I dropped out. I was like, this is not for me. I never really liked school. Um, 
So it was actually pretty, uh, I was, it was a very confusing time in my life. Um, you know, dropping out of college, I am the oldest. So I felt, I've always felt a lot of pressure because both of my parents are successful. Um, so I honestly didn't know what I was going to do. And then my best friend at the time, she started going to a, um, aesthetic school. And I remember growing up, I was always into makeup and skincare, but being from Dominican Republic, I was always told like, no, you honestly can't make money doing this. Um, you know, it's not going to be something that you're going to be able to sustain. So I shied away from it. And then I remember my best friend coming home every day and being like, it was so fun. We learned so much about skin. I'm meeting new girls. And I told my mom and she was like, go for it. What's the worst that could happen? Um, so I started it. And honestly, since the beginning, I always felt that it was my true calling. So I um, that was kind of my story. And I'm actually really happy, of course, that I started now that I'm here. That's awesome. So yeah, you decided to go to esthetician school. And mm -hmm. then from esthetician school, did you start work right away? Or what was that for you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So actually, when I started aesthetic school, um, I thought I was going to do facials and makeup. Mm -hmm. I was one of those girls that was like, why would I do waxing? I can't be that close and personal to people. And then as soon as I did it, it just came so easy to me that I was like, oh, this might be my thing. Especially, um, you know, seeing the results right away. I am a very impatient person, so I feel like if I were to do a facial and then three months later I'm not seeing any progress, I would be so disappointed. Mm -hmm. So um, as soon as I did waxing, like I said, it came very natural to me. And then I realized that I was good at it because all the girls from school would ask me to wax them. And I'm like, okay, maybe I can do something with this. Um, and then I graduated actually in 20... Uh, when did I graduate? 2019 um, in September, but I actually didn't start working until December of 2021. Um, so COVID happened, all of that happened. I didn't have a job. And then I remember my first um, spa job was, of course, waxing. And um, since the beginning, I knew that, you know, that was that was definitely something that I wanted to do for a while for a life. That's yeah. so interesting that you said that because I think like that's how I ended up in waxing too. Like I didn't mm -hmm. want to. I actually really hated yeah. it in school. I didn't yeah. really think I learned the proper technique either. And so, but you know, in school they push like facials and push the medical side of stuff, mm -hmm. at least for me. And yeah. so I'm like, there's no money in waxing. But yeah. then you start working and you see, actually, wait, you can make there's a hell of a lot. lot of money <laughs> like, yeah. in waxing. That is true. And like for me, whenever I started, um, I think I realized that since this is something that has to be consistent, I mean, clients have to come back between four to six weeks. That's how I was able to, you know, realize, oh, I can actually make money long term because as opposed to sometimes a facial um, where clients may not think is a necessity with waxing, you know, my clients are like, oh, girl, it's been four weeks. I need to come right now. Mm -hmm. So um that's whenever I realized, oh, I actually can do something, you know, something good with this. Nice. So it worked out. That's good. <clears throat> okay. So you started working for a chain, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And then how long were you there before you transitioned to your own spot? So I worked two waxing jobs. The first one, I was there for about three months. And then the second one, I was there for 10 months. Um, so the first one was a chain. The second one was a small business. I actually currently live in Charlotte, North Carolina. So it was a great company. I learned so much. Um, they actually had one like best wax spa in Charlotte. So, you know, we had a lot of clients every day. And um, moving to Charlotte is whenever I realized like I actually want to open up my own business because it is a rapidly growing city. Um, you know, so there's so much traffic um, and new potential clients. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say, yes, my first job, like three months and then second job about 10 months. Cool. Did you yes. enjoy those experiences? Did you feel like you learned like a lot or was it 
like yes personal. no I actually I actually did really enjoy both of my jobs um I learned a lot especially with my second one because the owner she was actually from Brazil you know came and kind of she was definitely my inspiration because she grew her you know small business at the beginning into something amazing so her doing it is what made me realize I can do it too um also something that was important to me has always been important is like client reviews so even from my first job I would always push reviews always push reviews and I guess since clients like potential clients would read reviews first and then they would see like Gabby come up a lot um you know I was able to re retain those clients or get new clients all of the time so once I saw that that was happening again at my second job, I was like, well, if I can bring in so many clients to somebody else, I can probably do this, you know, for my own business. So that's whenever the idea started, you know, kind of going in my head. Nice. Was it scary? Like, were you just like, I'm going to do it? Or was it just like, ah, I don't know, like back and forth for a little bit? Okay, so for me, I always believed that I would be really good and like successful at what I do only because I, I really have a passion for it. And for me, it's really important to kind of build that friendship with clients. Um, so I knew that as long as I could stay true to myself and do a great job, those clients would be rolling in and, you know, keeping those clients, which thankfully that has happened. That's great. I mean, yeah, you have to, it starts with your mindset, you know, like whatever you believe about yourself and the things yeah. that, you can, that you want to accomplish. Yes. Like, no. you know, you can do it. And I feel like we're our worst enemy. A lot of the times we limit mm -hmm. ourselves based off what we think, but yeah, like you just said, you believe in yourself and you know that you're yeah. good, you know? So yeah, exactly. I think that definitely has helped me. And a lot of that comes from my mom as well. My mom is very, like, she knows her worth. So growing up, she would always tell me, I know you're going to be, you know, successful. I know you have it in you. Whatever I have wanted to do, she has always pushed me. So it was scary. But knowing that, you know, my family, especially my mom was there for me. That was my biggest like, okay, well, I can do this. Oh, shout out to your mom. That's shout out amazing. to my mom. I know she'll listen to this, so shout out to your mom. Oh, yay. What would you say your motivation would be every day that, like, what keeps you going? So, like I said earlier, I am the oldest. So, my two younger siblings, um, they're actually much younger than me, and they have, since the beginning, have told me, um, I look up to you, I believe in you. So that has definitely keeps me going every day. And as well as being um, a first generation immigrant moving here to America, the fact that my family looks, oh, you know, they look up to me back in Dominican Republic. Um, that definitely keeps me going, especially those days where I feel low. And, you know, I have my mom reminding me, like, you know, you work for yourself, you wanted this, you growing this baby on your own. That definitely makes me realize, all right, Gabby, get up and you have to do this. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So what challenges do you feel like you have faced since like moving here and then starting your business? So challenges that I have over, um, you know, have faced would be, uh, People not believing that I can do it or better yet, like not having support from, let's say, you know, my good friends. Um, I think for me, since I don't have a lot of family here, those friends that I do have and have built over the years, um, they mean a lot to me. So it is true. Like when they say whenever, you know, you start your business, strangers may root for you more than, you know, people, you know. So I think for me, that has been really hard, but um, proving to myself, not just to other people, but to myself that I can do it um, also keeps me going, you know, every single day. So I'm actually really proud of myself, although, you know, I'm sure you can understand there's many challenges, but um, the fact that I was even to, you know, take that leap of faith and quit my job and, you know, do this on my own, that um, that's definitely motivational. Well, I'm proud of you, truly. Thank you. Like, that's so amazing. I love hearing like your story. And I think it's so cool, like being in this industry, like the way I see it is like 
there's room for all of us. Yeah. And we could get so far if we just, you know, supported one another and just really I agree. Put it on, you know, because I agree. a lot of people are doing it by themselves, you know, no help. And they're out here just like doing it and grinding sometimes, yeah right and sometimes it just takes that one person to be like you know what you got this I believe in you you know yeah no I agree I actually had a client this week um she had her own business of nail polishes but she went full time like a couple months ago and I was actually telling her how proud I am of her and she was like no you inspired me to do it because I see you doing it and you're much younger than me and here you are and that made me realize like women and inspiring women we can all bounce from each other and I feel like sometimes the beauty industry can be a little bit catty depending on the environment you're in but it's actually really good whenever you know women like us support each other that it's not it's not a competition there will always be those clientele we will always have something to learn but as long as you know we can fall back on each other I think that's what makes the beauty industry you know a beautiful thing I agree Period. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Period. <laughs> so, okay. So I want to know how, how did you start gaining your clientele? Like, what did you do day one that you start, you know, Instagram? Did you start word of mouth? How did you really like start building your clientele? So I would say that Instagram ads always like those really helped. Um, I always say that because, like I said, Charlotte is such a growing city. Um, you know, nowadays we can talk about something and our phones just magically listens to us and then we'll start getting like those sponsor ads. So I started with that. And then thankfully, those new clients that would come in, it was very important for me to, of course, keep them. So, you know, being myself and, you know, keeping that connection with my clients that then transferred to word of mouth. Um, so I have a lot of clients. I have a lot of new clients that say, Oh, so-and-so told me about this. Oh, um, I heard that you were really good. I read your reviews. You randomly came up on my Instagram. So I would say those two things are how, you know, my business personally was able to grow. Um, I don't knock Instagram ads at all. I think for me, they have been very beneficial. So that's, I would say that that's definitely what helped me as well as staying true to myself. Like I always tell my clients this, I don't treat them like clients. We we all really feel like friends. Like I'm really good at remembering or like sometimes I'll write notes on the profile of something that a client said. So when they'll come in like four weeks later and I remember, they're like, how do you remember that? I'm like, girl, we're friends. Like, why would I forget about that? So, um, you know, I think that is since waxing is part of self-care. I want my clients to be able to come in and know that, you know, it doesn't have to be a terrifying experience or it doesn't have to be uncomfortable. Just tell me about your life. I'll tell you about mine and then I'll see you next month. Right. Yeah. I I, I love that when, especially like when you have certain clients that, you know, you just click and it's just, yes. like, it makes everything just flow so much easier, you know? Like, yeah, I love, I love that. And taking notes. Absolutely. I agree. Because yeah, I think you like, you see so many clients in a day and you're like, wait a minute, who said what, who did this? Yes. <laughs> no. Yeah, I agree. And also, so I have um some of my clients that follow me from my previous job. I call, I call them my OG clients. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, um, you know, earlier you asked me what keeps me going, like those days that I'm seeing like those OG clients and we can catch up like, like from two years years ago they, they'll know things about me and vice versa um you know that that is very special to me that um I have been able to build that friendship as well like one of my well she started as my client but now we travel together we hang out outside of work um I have a couple of those that started as clients and then now we are really good friends wow. so that's cool yeah yeah, yeah. So it's it's nice meeting new people every day and, you know, um, and seeing inspiring women every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you have. OK, so as far as like the you said you did Instagram ads, right? Yes, I did. OK, so is there a certain way that you do them or do you just like post a picture and then it's like you boost the post or are you strategic with it? So I'm strategic with it. Um, 
you know, like Instagram now with the algorithm and the demographic and all this that changes so much. Mm -hmm. um, I know at the beginning, Instagram asked you like what um, age range or, um, you know, male or, male or female clients. Um, so for me, I target to, of course, is mainly women, those clients between like 18 and 30. 37 I put I believe but of course any age um and for me personally I do a wax Wednesday so that's the post that will show up whenever it's sponsored so um you know of course everybody likes um you know a special so whenever the wax Wednesday comes up um you know, I believe that the clients go to my to my Instagram page and then, you know, they see how interactive I am or they just like me for, you know, me being my true self. So um, it has honestly been that same post since the beginning, the Wax Wednesday. And that I've actually had um, a lot of my clients follow me from Instagram, the majority, I would say. Wow. OK, so when do you do when do you sponsor that post? Is it like couple days before like on Wednesday or is it on a Wednesday that you do it so is every like I have it running um for every other day and I do four dollars a day so okay. it will show up all like that day all day um and then it'll show up to like I said those people that are living in Charlotte women who are looking up those hashtags hashtags are also pretty important I'm not sure if I brought that up but um hashtag you know the city that you're in or hashtag esthetician and the city you're in because Instagram and social media is very important nowadays mm -hmm. I think we can all agree that um so of course using those hashtags and being interactive on social media which has actually been my biggest challenge I'm um, staying consistent just because it's Instagram hard can, <laughs> right uh, it, can be, it can be draining like, right mm -hmm. and then seeing so many clients a day and then having to show your face on Instagram and that can be very draining but definitely it's it's definitely you know we have to do it nowadays to be able to grow our business so mm -hmm. I would say those ads really did help me cool yeah well, that's good to know I it's been a while since I've done um an ad but I've been getting encouraged to like do them yeah. again because they yeah. work so I'm gonna try that and see if yeah it no, definite, definitely do. Um, Because, you know, like I said, you'll say anything and your phone will bring it up just like that. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll have clients. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll have clients are like, I just said I need a wax. And then you came up and here we are. I'm like, well, that's great. Great. Here we are. Exactly. <laughs> the ads are working. That's awesome. Yeah. So we are in this industry and we give so much to others. Like, we are basically in an industry of self-care. Yes. We are we're their waxer, we're their, you know, therapists in some in some way. We're mm -hmm. um their nail techs, their hairstylists, all these things. And sometimes it can be hard to carve out those times and spaces for ourselves, mm -hmm. especially when we're giving so much to our business, so much to our clients, family, etc. So self-care is but self-care is important, right? It's yes. important for us as well. So in that light, how are you carving out time for yourself in the midst of life and, you know, how, how things can kind of get, are you taking time for yourself as well? Yeah. So, um, I believe, like you said, self-care is very important, especially since we give so much to our clients. Mm -hmm. Um, so for me personally, I do the monthly routine of nails, you know, get my toes done, facials, um, but something that's really important to me is my, you know, quiet alone time, especially since I'm talking every day, listen to music all day, every day. Um, so getting home, taking a long shower, I'm talking about like an hour. Sometimes I'm like, am I, am I overdoing it? But it feels good <laughs> to me, you know, it, it fills my cup up. Mm -hmm. And then of course, you know, watching TV with some ice cream with my dogs, that, that fills my cup to where the next day I'm like, all right, I'm ready to do it all over again. Um, so yeah, self-care is definitely important, you know, for what we do and in general, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that I do. Also, I do love to go dancing. I pretty much go out dancing um, by myself, 
and it just makes me feel free you know like all the stress and everything else like I can just dance it away and it's honestly the best feeling for me I love dancing too like, right I, what kind of like where do you go to dance so I'm really into house music um and in Charlotte there is a small community but we're all so close mm -hmm. um so like I said going out dancing by myself and I am you know I am Dominican so I know how to like bachata and so I can like do that on the dance floor you know like mm -hmm. grind my hips a little bit and okay just be my, yeah so be free. essentially <laughs> exactly that's that's how it is you know feeling free on the dance floor to where nobody's watching and I can just do what I want to do so that definitely is is how I you know take care of myself nice I love it yeah. love it yes. So as we wrap up, is there anything um, exciting happening with your business right now? Are you doing anything new that you want to talk about? Yeah. Um. So I actually just celebrated my one year a couple weeks ago. Um, Yay. Yeah, I know. Um, it actually goes by so fast. Mm -hmm. But um, something that I want to work on with my business now is be better at like, I don't know if you've seen, like, those voiceovers nowadays to where, you know, people are, like, recording their workday and then talking over it. Um, that, mm -hmm. to me, I want to be more, like, I want to be, like, a pro at my reels and uh, my post to where it doesn't seem intimidating to me anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to, because I'll scroll on Instagram and I'll see those accounts and I'm like, I just want to get there. Mm -hmm. So I actually did my first voiceover last week and, uh, you know, I got a lot of good feedback from it. So I saw it. That's it was great. Thank you. I appreciate good. that. Thank you. You're so, you welcome. know, doing more things like that to where I can be more present on social media. Mm -hmm. um is something that I do want to work on you know I think that is the first thing that clients see when they're mm -hmm. looking for you so yeah I want to be you know I want to be able to enhance that and I'm also currently in the process of like redecorating my suites added some wallpaper you know I'm gonna do you know like make it feel my own make it feel special so those are like the current things that I'm working on right now I love it yeah, you know, being um consistent and showing up online is so hard. But mm -hmm. I've been I've been challenging myself to do that too. Yes. It's just kind of like you said, finding a good balance and like planning your content ahead. And then like I was listening to a podcast where mm -hmm. um someone she was saying that she's not gonna she's not overthinking it anymore. Kind of like what you just said. Yeah, and what she does is just B roll shots or B-roll videos, you know, just of her doing everyday tasks and yeah. allowing that to just kind of be the content for the day, you know? Yeah. So doing things like that, just, it kind of takes the pressure off and realize, hey, like, you just want, you just need to be in people's faces and that's really Exactly. Cool. Exactly. And I think for me, like, that's what I am learning, you know, even a year in, because I remember when I started, I'm like, okay, I need to post three times a day. I need to show my face every day. Like it felt more like a schedule mm -hmm. and I had to do it rather than it coming to me and me wanting to, you know, actually be present. So um, like you said, it, it's hard to, you know, show up, but clients want to see anything. Like mm -hmm. I'll post, I, I even started doing, um, you know, just post everyday life things like, oh, I'm getting my nails done, like, you know, and be interactive like that. Because at the end of the day, we're humans. And if anything, clients just want to feel like they're a part of what we're doing, not just like an outcast. So yeah, it's definitely important to show up. I agree. Yeah. Well, thank you so, so much, Miss Gabby. It's been amazing getting to know you and yes. sharing your knowledge and experience with our listeners today yeah thank um, where, you of course where can we find you on social media and all the things yes so i have instagram and facebook and it's at skin co wax bar um i am thinking about making a tiktok because you know that is so the big ways. now <laughs> yeah but um skin co wax bar is the name of my business and all of my social media as well nice and i'll be sure to drop your information in the show notes too Thank you. You're welcome. Alrighty. Well, it's been a pleasure and we will see you guys in the next episode. See ya. Thank you again. You're welcome. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. If you enjoyed today's conversation, leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. 
You can find me on IG at The Waxing Esthetician. See you next time.